Yesterday, Yaraji explained on three kinds of Samanya Lekhana, three kinds of common characteristics. So, every Nama Rupa, every conditioned phenomena has these three characteristics, common characteristics. So these Samanya Lekhana are not Paramatta, they are not ultimate truth, but these Samanya Lekhana is Atara Banyati, is a manner concept. So when the Shogi understands cause and effect, and when the Shogi continues to practice, Yogi will come to see arising and passing away of the object. When seeing arising and passing away of the object, Yogi comes to understand that these phenomena are impermanent. Seeing the impermanence of these objects, Yogi will overcome manakaha, Yogi will overcome conceit. If one takes things as good, then there will be craving. But if the person does not think of it as good anymore, when the person sees things as suffering, there will not be craving anymore. So in this way, seeing things as suffering, one can overcome craving. So dasna gaha, craving has no chance to arise when the person sees the suffering of things. So by seeing impermanence and suffering over and over again, one comes to know that there is no Atta involved. Atta Wadi, the people who believe in the view of Atta, they think that there is Atta involved, there is a soul or Atta in the being, and they think of Atta as permanent. But when seeing impermanence and suffering, Yogi also come to know that there is no Atta involved. Seeing Nama Rupa phenomena arising and passing away, Yogi comes to understand that there is no Atta which is permanent. So by seeing Nama Rupa, Yogi overcomes the wrong view of Ditti. So in this way, Yogi overcomes Tatna Mana Deti, craving, conceit, and wrong view. So these three are called Papancha because they prolong the person from one life to another, because they prolong the assistance, one assistance to another. That's why these three, Dasna, Mana, Deti, craving, conceit, and wrong view are called Bhattancha. So in order to overcome these three, one needs to have knowledge into impermanent suffering and non-self. So by developing knowledge into impermanent suffering and non-self, one can weaken gradually these three kinds of papanja, which are satna, mana, ditti. So these characteristics of impermanent suffering and non-self are called Adinava. So to explain Adinava, simply, Adinava means uh, flaws or faults. 
and the opposite of Adinava means Asada. The opposite of Adinava is Asada. Uh, the thing to be attached to or attachment. So the opposite of attachment is non-attachment. The person becomes detached and getting bored with the uh, thing. So if one is something contemptible, then one will feel disenchantment towards the thing. So practicing Satipatthana meditation is to see the characteristics of impermanent suffering and non-self. So by seeing impermanent suffering and non-self through practice, one will see the flaws of Nama Rupa phenomena. So practicing Satipatthana meditation is to see the Nama Rupa phenomena as contemptible and disgusting. So seeing Nama Rupa, mind and matter, as contemptible, then one will become bored or one will become uh, disenchanted towards the Nama Rupa. So in this way, one will overcome Satna, craving, and mana, conceit. So the characteristics of impermanent suffering and non-self, these are arising itself. By knowing impermanent suffering and non-self, one will overcome ditti, wrong view. And one will see the Nama Rupa that is relating to this wrong view. So one will see this Nama Rupa as impermanent suffering and non-self. And one will see that these Nama Rupa are contemptible because they are impermanent suffering and non-self. So there is a sample given in the text. If a person wants to buy a dress or a shirt, he, she goes to a store, a department store, and he, she finds the shirt or the dress that is made of good material, it is of a nice color, the design is good, the cutting is nice. But if when the person takes a look at the dress or the shirt, he, she sees three holes. Before the person sees three holes in the dress, the person liked the dress or the shirt so much because it, is, it, is, uh, it has good material, good design, good color, good uh, stitching, good cut, and so on. So before seeing the three holes, the person decided to buy the dress or the shirt. And this person becomes attached with the dress or the shirt that he, she cannot stop buying. But and also, the person has the kind of conceit, I, uh, a person like I, only I can have such kind of dress or such kind of shirt. So in this way, he, she can have attachment and conceit, pride in the dress or the shirt. But when seeing three holes, however, the dress or the shirt, may be of good quality, good material, good cutting, or good color, but the person does not want the dress or the shirt anymore. So rather than seeing fault 
in the three holes, the person sees fault in the dress that has the three holes. Actually, one should see a flaw in the three holes. It is the three holes that is uh, contemptible. But actually, the person sees flaw in the dress or the shirt which has the three holes. So when the jogi is noting the object, whatever object is arising, the nama rupa phenomena, by knowing distinctly between mind and matter, there will be sila visuti, uh, purification of morality, purification of precepts. And when the yogi goes on to practice, the mind will be free from nibbana hindrances, and thus there will be jitta visuti, purification of the mind. And as the yogi continues to practice, yogi will see apart the object and the noting mind. And as the yogi continues practice, his or her kanika samadhi, momentary concentration, will develop. When the person develops momentary concentration, kanika samadhi, then he or she will come to know distinctly between cause and effect. At the stage of insight into cause and effect, the person has not seen the flaw of nama rupa yet, because the person has not seen the dissolution of the object. Not seeing the dissolution of the object, the person has not known the characteristics of impermanent suffering and non-self. So at the stage of insight into cause and effect, the person does not see the flaws of Nama Rupa because he or she has not seen the solution and he or she has not developed Vipassana Jnana, insight knowledge yet. But as the yogi continues to practice, when he, she comes to see the dissolution, fast dissolution of the object, then the person understands impermanence. So before the practice, he, she will think of things as permanent, but when the person gets to the stage of insight into fast dissolution of objects, then one will not take things as permanent. So before the practice, one usually takes pride in good health. They even think that they will not die. So having good health, having strength, one takes pride in his or her good health and strength. And if the person is strong to go here and there, then they feel elated and take pride. And there can be pride and conceit, such as I am Siaro, I am meditation teacher, I am Pali teacher. So this can happen in monks and nuns. And among the lay person, there can be conceit, and pride such as I am the president, I am the prime minister, I am the lawyer, I am an intellect, I am a PhD doctor, and so on. So it is called asami mana, the kind of conceit, the kind of pride that can arise connecting with what he or what he, she is. So based on good health and strength, one can have asami mana, so there can be pride and conceit based on uh, good health and so on. So he, she is said to be captivated by mana, 
he she is said to be captivated by conceit and pride. So this mana conceit will be eradicated only when the person becomes an arahat. So all the mana conceit will totally be eradicated by arahata maganyana. But the apaya gamaniya, the kind of conceit that is related to lower assistances, the kind of mana, the kind of conceit that can lead one to be reborn in apaya, could be eradicated by sotapati maganyana, the first stage of path knowledge. If the person has so much pride, then other people will be criticizing the person. So he, she will be hated or disliked by others if the person has too much pride. So when seeing suffering in things, one will not have pride. Uh, in seeing impermanent in things, one will not have pride anymore. So by seeing the impermanent, conceit will become weaken and weaken. Before one sees things as suffering, one will think of things as good. If one takes things as good, there will be craving. And one will think whatever one does, whatever one talks is right. So he, she thinks whatever he, sh whatever he, she does or talk is good and right. That's why the king Ashoka, the king Ashoka said that people do things because they think of these things as right or good. So after doing things because they think of them as good, after doing them, they regret later on, only when they realize that they were wrong. So people do things because they think of them as good, they think of them as right, but after some time, they may realize that it is not right. So they will have remorse and regret. And by the time they find out that it is no good, they suffer. So in the body, there are nama rupa phenomena which are arising and passing away. Because they pass away, they dissolve after arising, they are no good. So if people know them as not good, they will not do it. So these things which are impermanent, suffering and non-self, they arise in their own accord. So nobody is doing them so that they will be impermanent, suffering and non-self. So things that are good, they are good because they are good circumstances. And things that are bad, they are bad, they are bad in their own accord. So nobody is creating these things to be either good or bad. If one does not know this fact, people will think that things are happening according to his or her wishes. And people will think of them as permanent and good. When seeing the impermanence of these things, the person will automatically know that it is suffering. And also, the person will also know that there is no self. So practicing Siddhipatthana meditation is to know that these nama rupa phenomena are impermanent, suffering and non-self. So one has to practice Siddhipatthana meditation so as to 
come to know the characteristics of impermanent suffering and non-self. So just as the example given when the person went to the shop to buy the dress, the person liked the color, the quality, the material, the design, and the cut. But when the person sees three holes in the dress, then the person knows that this dress is no good. So rather than seeing flaw or fault in the three holes, the person sees fault in the dress that has three holes. So in the same way, when one comes to see impermanence, suffering and non-self through practice, not by thinking, then seeing the impermanence, the person will overcome mana, conceit. And seeing suffering, one will not become attached anymore. So by seeing suffering, one will overcome satna, craving. And also, one will understand that there is no self involved. So by seeing that there is no self, he, she will overcome wrong view, dikti. So one has to practice Satipatthana meditation in order to gain vipassana jnana, inside knowledge, so that one will see impermanent suffering and <coughs> non-self through the practice. The characteristics of impermanent suffering and non-self, they are not paramatta, they are not ultimate truth. But the characteristics impermanent suffering and non-self, they are manner concepts which arise based on paramatta. So in order to see three holes, one has to look through the dress, only then he, she will see the whole. So in the same way, one has to practice Satipatthana meditation in order to see the three characteristics of impermanent and non impermanent suffering and non-self. Seeing these three characteristics, one will come to know that Nama Rupa phenomena are contemptible. Just as when the person sees three holes in the dress, he, she does not want the dress anymore. So in the same way, when the person sees the three characteristics of impermanent suffering and non-self, the person will come to see that the Nama Riva are contemptible. So practicing Siddhipatthana meditation is searching for the three characteristics so that one will come to know that the Nama Rupa are contemptible. By seeing these three characteristics, one can reduce and one can overcome dasna, mana and diti, craving, conceit and wrong view that has been following throughout the samsara. So one is weakening uh, in order in order to weaken, in order to remove, in order to eradicate Satna Mana Titi, one has to practice Satipatthana meditation. So if a person has some kind of success, then the person can become elated and the, per the person can have pride and conceit over his or her success. So when this happens, the person will be very proud and the person will become attached in his or her success. So there can be mana Conceit such as only I am successful and the person becomes attached with his or her success 
and there can also be dirty, wrong view. So, what this person has this kind of conceit, craving, and wrong view over his or her success is contemptible. A person who is very proud will be disliked by the surrounding. And when the person is selfish, this person will be disliked by the surrounding. A person who will do whatever he, she wants out of wrong view, then the person will be disliked by the surrounding. So what the person is doing with Dasna Mana Jeti, craving, conceit and wrong view will be contemptible. So when one is practicing Satipatthana meditation by noting whatever object that arises, he, she will come to know impermanence, suffering and non-self. So the person has developed knowledge being impermanent, suffering, and non-self. So this knowledge that the person has developed is said to be weakening the unwholesome state, such as dasna mana diti. That's why it is said, wholesomeness is obtained with jnana. Wholesomeness is obtained with knowledge. So to obtain means to develop, to cultivate and increase so that wholesomeness will be increased. So this wholesomeness is called kusala because it can be obtained by knowledge. But some of the people criticize that practicing Satipatthana meditation is looking for faults. So that's why they criticize that Buddha's teachings are making the people discouraged. Because they say that if one sees good in one life, one's body, one will have comfort and happiness. So by practicing Satipatthana meditation, they say that because one sees fault in oneself, so they say Buddha's teachings are making the person discouraged. And also, Buddha's teachings are making so that the person will lose comfort and happiness. So this is what other people say who do not know. So. If they say such things because they do not know, let it be. But if they are saying such things in order to gain upper hand, in order to win, then it is not good. So being discouraged means, discouraged means a passive kind of dosa, passive kind of anger. But Knowing the truth is knowledge. So they should know that knowing the truth is knowledge. So by being mindful, when one comes to know the truth of impermanent suffering and non-self, they are developing knowledge. And they are also developing hiri and utapa, moral shame, and moral fear. So by being mindful, one will come to know the truth, and by developing knowledge, one will be weakening, eradicating the contemptible, unwholesome state. So this is jnana, knowledge, that can overcome, that can eradicate and remove the unwholesome state. So by knowing, by understanding the truth, through practice, one will come to a firm decision and acceptance 
that this practice is right. So in this way, one will be developing sata, faith and confidence. One will have strong will in the practice. And one will diligently practice. One will be mindful so that one also cultivate moral shame and moral fear, tiri and otapa from doing bad things. So not knowing the truth, there will be delusion, moha, there will be loba, greed and dosa, anger and so on. And there can be also active as well as passive form of dosa. By being mindful, one will have knowledge into the truth and one will also be accumulating wholesome space such as aloba, non-greed, adosa, non-hatred and also one will cultivate knowledge. So in this way, one's mind will become pure, clean and beautiful. So knowledge is making one's mind pure, clean and beautiful. That's why having knowledge, one will be cultivating faith and confidence, strong will in the practice, diligence, non-greed, non-hatred, non-delusion and so on. So that one's mind will become pure and clean and it is called kusala, wholesome. So practicing Buddha's teaching, practicing Siddhipatthana meditation is not to discourage oneself. But instead, by practicing Siddhipatthana meditation, one's mind will become pure, clean, gentle and beautiful. So seeing this situation, there is the teaching of the teacher saying that if one does not practice vipassana, then one will be suppressed and tormented by these three things, sasna, mana and ditti. So there will be conceit, it is I, I own this, this is my view and so on. So in this way, if there is no vipassana, one will be cultivating these three, tatna, mana, titi, and one will be continuously suppressed and pressured by the uh, tatna, mana, titi, craving, conceit, and wrong view. And by practicing Siddhipatthana meditation, by practicing vipassana, when the person develops vipassana jnana, inside knowledge, one will overcome these three so that these three can no longer pressure or suppress or torment the person. That's why it is said, without vipassana, it will be a loss. And with vipassana, one will profit. So nobody likes to lose. Everybody likes to profit. So if one likes to make profit, one needs to note whatever object that arises. By noting every arising object, one will come to see the true nature as well as the three characteristics of impermanent suffering and non-self. When one comes to see these characteristics of impermanent suffering and non-self, one is making profit without having to wish for. So, in order to make the international yogis who are here, Sarasi will explain from both theory and practice. So, in the text, it is said that one should know anicca, one should also know anicca lekkana, and one should know anicca nupasana. 
So one should know these three things, anicca, impermanence, anicca lekkana, characteristic of impermanence, and anicca nupakana, contemplation of inter- impermanence. So anicca means impermanent. In the body, the nama rupa phenomena arising as striker element, receptor element, ignition element, all these are anicca, impermanent. They are opposite of permanent. And they arise and pass away. So this characteristic of arising and passing away is anicca lekana, characteristic of impermanence. Because they pass away after arising. So that's why it is called anicca lekana. It is the characteristic of impermanence because they dissolve after passing away. And when loading the object, seeing the impermanence, it is anicca nupasana, contemplation of impermanence. Another way, it is called vipassana jnana, inside knowledge. So, for example, one experience heat. So, this heat is anicca, it is impermanent. So the heat arises and passes away. So the heat passes away after arising. So the manner of passing away after arising, it is called anicca lekana, characteristic of impermanence. So when noting heat, Jogi comes to see the passing away of this heat by noting. So seeing the passing away of heat when noting, it is called anicca nupasana jnana, contemplation of impermanence. So the heat, it is anicca, impermanent. The characteristic of dissolving after it has arisen it is called anicca lekana, characteristic of impermanence. When noting heat, yogi comes to know the passing away of this heat when noting. So it is anicca nupasana, contemplation on impermanence. And this anicca nupasana can also be called vipassana jnana, inside knowledge. Only when one sees the dissolution of the object when noting, then it will be anicca nupasana, and it is vipassana jnana, inside knowledge. So if one sees the dissolution just by imagination or thinking, then it is not vipassana. So one only by seeing the dissolution of the object when noting the object with aim and effort, only when he, she sees the dissolution of the object when noting it, it will be vipassana jnana, inside knowledge. So what the person comes to know by imagination or thinking, it is not vipassana. In order to develop vipassana, one needs to note the presently arising object with aim and effort. And when the person sees the dissolution of the object when noting, then one will be developing vipassana, jnana, insight knowledge. But some of the yogis are wasting their time thinking, imagining, and some of the yogis, they are not noting effectively on the object that is arising at the present moment, so they are wasting their precious time. So Sharaji will like to encourage the yogis to make use 
of the time that you have to practice diligently so that you will be gaining vipassana jnana, inside knowledge. So Saraji will like all of you to make use of your time, your precious time, so that it will be worthy. <laughs>